my colleague Michael Ogbodu, who has also joined us. Michael, generally we, we are dissecting the Ashanti region. Mm. We've looked at the historicity and how they voted and why they intend to keep the NDC at bay or how they have kept them at bay. But what are your general thoughts, first of all? We'll come to other specifics, but yeah. yeah. Your initial I think the Ashanti region is an interesting one this time around because beyond the NPP and the NDC, I think we've not given much spotlight on the butterfly movement and then uh, Cheddar, who are both from the Ashanti region. So it'll be interesting to know how much impact uh, these two would have especially as indigents also of the region. I'm sure with the numbers that we've seen, uh, both of them are placing third and fourth uh, in the polls that have come together. And they are pulling quite uh, significant, uh, interesting numbers mm. uh, uh, ahead of the election. So I'm, I'm really interested to see how this all plays out. It makes it even more interesting where uh, the uh, NPP is hoping to get that 85%, especially now that we know that there will be two loopholes there that they have to tackle yeah. uh, with their projection. And then it's interesting also that in the midst of this, the NDC uh, is also very confident and hoping mm. to get 35%, which has never happened in the history of the party, even mm. at the high points of the party when uh, Jerry John really Rawlings cool. was at the home of affairs. They only managed 32%. I'm wondering what the where the confidence is from because yeah. if you look at the numbers from 20 16 to 2020, they managed to grow uh, just about three per uh, percentage points. Mm. So hoping to scale that up by almost nine percentage points is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what cards they have up their sleeves, but it will be interesting also to note that uh, the party has been very active in the region. I gather that since 2020 till date, Mahama has visited the region more than 10 times. Mm. Yes. So yes. they've been very active in there. And I can give you so many examples for which is in there, from the thank you tour to the recent one, the meeting with the clergy that had very... Uh, interesting numbers in attendance. I get that the whole auditorium was full yes. till the overflow. It just raises a lot of interest and uh, it makes you very curious what really is happening in the region. The region. Uh, if it's a cry, it's understandable. But to get that level of uh, attendance, it suggests some level of support. Mm. Maybe it's a reflection of the fact that times are really hard and even the clergy is, is taking <laughs> a pinch and, and are considering options. Those are just a few of them. Jena Naopokwajima was also in the region, I think, two weeks ago. Yeah. It shows you that they are actively on the grounds. Maybe Maybe that is why they are very confident uh, that they've done a lot of work on the grounds and are hoping to gain significant grounds. Yes, and then that dovetails into my next question to you, Mr. Nimako, uh, Nyako, which is that the NDC, so we have, you've thrown some doubt in the minds of the MPP supporters that they may not be able to claw 80%. No, they are However, <laughs> they won't get that. Yeah. However, the NPP, the NDC, I should say, is also looking at 30, 35%. Is that a possibility on their side? I think based on their 2020 showing, I will give them between 28 and 30. And 30. Yes, but there is no way they are, they are, they are, they are crossing the 30% mark. Really? No, it, 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 that, that is impossible. And what would they... So we know that these are the two key parties that dominate national conversations when it comes to elections. In this year's election, the race has got two interesting characters from the Ashanti region as well. And Michael touched briefly on them. We are talking about um, Alan Kojo Chamatin, who is also a son of the soil. In fact, if you followed politics in the country, you'd know that John Ejekum Kufo, who had the most votes in the Ashanti region for the NPP over time, more or less sadly endorsed Alan Kojo Chamatin. So if he were the presidential candidate, maybe the dynamics would be different. But he's not. However, he's from within their fold. Could it happen that he will claw some of the NPP's vote. Had it been that it's just NDC, NPP, just the two, there's a likelihood from what you have said that NPP may not even make up to 80 or above 80. But now that they even have someone who is from within their fold, could he do a bit more damage to the NPP, you think? I mean, we are, we are, we, uh, I think let's wait and see what happens. But what I would say is that sometimes the performance of lesser, let's say, Parties, which are not uh, the two main candidates, depends on their ability to field parliamentary candidates. Mm. Okay. So, for example, in 2020, Goom did very well, not necessarily because nationally people like, because they were the third party to have filled a lot of parliamentary candidates across the country. Right. So, if you have those numbers, backing the presidential candidate, it becomes easier mm. for people to vote for the parliamentary candidate as well as the presidential. Mm. So if within the Ashanti region, he doesn't have a much reach in terms of parliamentary outputs, what is going to happen is that 
I don't think he will have that level of impact that we are expecting. Okay. But if he has those numbers of uh, uh, aspirants in terms of uh, uh, parliamentary candidates who have filed and they are campaigning on the ground for him, and they are moving from house to house, mm. and then doing some sort of uh, engagement that you usually expect from uh, political parties, mm. then we will begin to uh, say that, okay, his input or whatever he's done, I mean, is going to affect the fortunes of maybe the two main parties. But mm. for now, I don't know the number who have filed as candidates, candidates for... on, their, on his behalf. Right. And sometimes it is not just being at the national level. You need ground game. Right. And I don't know his level of ground game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, he's been to the Ashanti region a few times, as recently as I think um, last week or two weeks ago, to do what is more like a, a health walk. And the numbers that turned out wearing yellow um, as his support base was quite high. Of course, we know that any political candidate that comes there would get some numbers, especially if you're going to be giving out free T-shirts. They'll be happy to be, to be there. But as to whether that number will translate into votes is a different conversation. How about Nana Kwame Bediako, also known as Cheddar? If Alan Chemantin... As of now, we'll find out now from, um, from William Evans Income later whether Alan has any um, parliamentary candidates on the Movement for Change uh, ticket. We'll, we'll find that out from Evans shortly. But w what are your thoughts also on Nana Kwame Bede Akun, who is also from the region and has been trumpeting the fact that both parties have failed. I am the new uh, Kwame Nkrumah, so give me the, the nod. Can he also make any impact, you think? I don't think he can make that level of impact that people ascribe uh, to, or maybe the polls uh, are okay. showing. No, I, I think I think he may get some numbers, but I don't. I don't see him mm -hmm. any making any more significant impact. The two main parties will, will hold their own. They yeah. will. I don't think there is a more of a threat from the other parties. Okay. In the region. The two parties will hold their own. They will do what is expected of them. Mm. The, 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 the challenge from Alan and uh, Bediakon, uh, I don't see that much as impacting their, their chance and their fortunes in the right. region. Yes. Right. Okay. So clearly it tells you that from all indications, if you really want to make any kind of impact, you need parliamentary candidates.